what about Peter Duisberg's claim that molecular cloning is the best detection uh, technique for retroviruses? Look, uh, the question is, what's about Peter Duisberg's latest claims that finding the soul of a virus is the latest proof for the existence, existence of a virus? Well, I say this, it makes me, it's easy to criticize this point because it's so clear that it's a circular argument. First, in mixing such cell lines with material over years, they enrich genetic materials in such cells because if added, if DNA is added, added, DNA has a tendency to integrate inside the cells, so you enrich it there in order to isolate genetic material of HIV or the other viruses, you take them out, but not, not from this very special cell line. You have to find it in the material of people. So the secret is that it has been enriched here and in order to isolate the genetic material, the infectious clone, you always have to use such kind of cell lines. You never find a hole in a patient. So, and their self-deception or their lie, and I'm using this hard word because it's obvious. And in case of HIV and the fear of this death sentence, we cannot just talk about this issue and come up after 20 years of biology, modern biology, to say this whole thing about antibodies, biochemistry, proteins is all rotten and we, we just now the new standard of isolation is molecular cloning. Because what they do? They use another cell line, cells, just add amplified genetic material and then redetect the genetic material inside the cells and say, look, it's there. Look, I think it's irresponsible after 20 years of biology just to come up <laughs> with, with new techniques, with new methods, and to say this is the final proof of a virus. You, you just come up with a stretch of genetic material which you say, say it represents the viral genetic material, and you pull it onto cells and you redetect it and then you say, look, it's there. And because I can redetect it or re-isolate it, what I put in before, then that is the proof of a virus. This is just a stupid circular argument. It's incredible. And I think here the choking and the scientific, you know, this pseudoscience should stop because think of the fear and what, what such test, positive test, which you know, such results mean for those people. And I think this is, we have to analyze this uh, by psychological means because people are so much in their techniques, in their concepts. And I hear, hear way often in science, everything is possible. Yeah, everything is possible. And let's, we allow them to make some claim, claims. And if you allow them to make such claims without having a proof for it, and we have to open our eyes and ears and our brains to see where are the circular arguments. But, uh, I want you to say something about vaccines now. The question about vaccines, look, if there is no virus and if they can only detect by indirect means the presence of some protein said to be specific for HIV but expressed only under severe stress conditions, then to vaccinate it means to make the thing worse. And of course, if there is no demonstration of the existence of such virus, it makes absolutely no sense to vaccinate. Um, can you comment on the principle of vaccination in general? Well, it's another topic and probably it's an overkill. If I would go in, I have a lot of other things to criticize on uh, because if you just go into the literature, a history of, of vaccination, you will find that all diseases finished or 
went down long before vaccination was applied. So only to mention. Uh, something we haven't discussed before, but uh, do you have any comment on this recent uh, so-called scandal about the Abbott uh, antibody negative tests that were not supposed to happen? Yeah, about the Abbott test. It's ridiculous that no journalist is asking, well, if there is a test which does not work 100%, not to ask, well, if we have false negatives, what's about the false positives? And here you see the central dogma. If they once have a positive, this is their dogma, they say the virus is somewhere. And that's it. It's just an act of definition. Finding antibodies, testing positive, you are positive. You are going to die. You have the virus inside yourself somewhere. And if you are ne negative, they don't retesting with, with you. And because if they would retest you, especially with the genetic test, and perform them in the proper way, not using those dirty molecular tricks, then they may test the same amount of people, of course positive, than they test in the group of antibody positive. Question: You often hear people talk about PCR in terms oh, yeah. of virus. What is the difference between uh, for retrovirus, so-called retrovirus, PCR uh, for RNA, PCR for DNA? The secret of all this PCR testing is that if they want to test you positive, well, you are positive, you are positive in antibody test, or you are gay and have illness, right? Or you think you are the AIDS case. So they isolate, they try to isolate a certain kind of RNA out of your body, but you know those stress proteins eventually misdiagnosed as representing HIV are only expressed under certain stress conditions or if you have immunological contact with them. If they are expressed under those stress reactions, of course RNA has to be produced before. And this RNA is detected, amplified and said, well, you are positive in a PCR test. And if you take the starter molecules, which are always needed in PCR, to test them positive with their stretches of RNA. If you take the same stretches, of course, as they do, in testing somebody negative, they are not doing it with the RNA, but with the DNA. And the secret in here is that those stretches won't fit to the DNA because when RNA is produced, the genetic information is slightly changed and it's not it does not look like the same like on a molecular, on the chromosomal level, on the DNA level. And this is the trick behind this PCR testing. Well, the question is that when antibody tests are not specific because they have, there is no wild isolation, no wild proteins, why not PCR testing is more accurate? In principle, PCR is more sensitive, but if you just uh, if you are just detect proteins which your own body developed or which you received by blood donations or using factor eight preparations, the same applies of course for the PCR testing. They are using a technique to amplify sequences which were inside your body but only expressed under special conditions. And so the PCR testing as well is absolutely invalid.